Hello, brothers and sisters in Christ. <laughs> the birds are out this morning. We've had hardcore rain, fill, oh, oh, rain hot off and on, and fog and mist and water, 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 wet, wet, wet for the past three or four days. God put on my heart, let's do a uh, morning Bible read. So open your Bibles to 2 Timothy chapter 3. We're going to read chapter 3 and then we're going to read part of chapter 4 to get into the context of what I really wanted to express today and encourage you brothers and sisters with Christ with my morning Bible reading. Mm -hmm. So let's start in 2 Timothy chapter 3. This know also that in the last days perilous times shall come. Are we in the last days? Oh yeah. For men shall be lovers of their own selves. Covetousness. We have a problem with that right now in the body of Christ. Covetousness, which is idolatry. Boasters. Proud. We have a problem with that in the body of Christ. It seems like with the world... Remember what I said, brothers of Christ? You have three enemies. Okay? The world. And this is what this is talking about. This know that in the last days perilous times shall come. For men... It's talking about the world. But can brethren fall for these same things? Absolutely. Can you get really messed up if you give in to the, the world? That's one of the enemies. Your flesh, that's another enemy. And Satan, and doing things Satan's way, and obeying Satan's word, and turning your back on God's word. Make sure you have a King James Bible and you're following along, brothers and sisters in Christ. Okay? But boasters, proud, blasphemers, disobedient to parents, unthankful, unholy. Without natural affection, truce breakers, false accusers, incontinent, fierce, despisers of those that are good. Brothers and sisters, this is good. And when you stand by this and live it, you're going to have people despising you. Despisers of those that are good. Traitors. Heady, high-minded, lovers of pleasures more than lovers of God. They have a love of God. But they love pleasures more than lovers of God. Do we see that today, brothers of Christ? Predominantly, what was it, uh, over half the world's population, I think we're up to 7 billion, and then half of that would be 3.5 billion people believe in a Jesus Christ. They profess, profess to have a love in a God. Not the God, but a God. But what keeps them from the true capital G, God the Father, which is in Jesus Christ. Jesus Christ, who is God the Father, fully and completely. What prevents people from truly believing it and getting saved? Lovers of pleasures. Sin. The flesh. Remember, one of the enemies is the flesh. What messes up a Christian? The flesh. Mm -hmm. The world. The flesh. Okay. Lovers of pleasures more than lovers of God, having a form of godliness, but denying the power thereof. Denying the power thereof. They, have, will, they refuse to repent and believe in the finished work of Jesus Christ on the cross. They pr refuse to give their life completely. In the, the old man, they, they refuse to give the old man to give that life completely and fully to Jesus Christ at the cross. I'm not talking about Chain, uh, cleaning up your life and then getting saved. I'm saying when I got saved, I said, Lord, that old man is yours. Dead and buried. God gave me a new life. I'm risen with Christ. A changed life. That old man's gone. Every once in a while he tries to come back. That's why Paul warns about uh, not resurrecting the old man. The old man's supposed to be dead and buried. Don't resurrect him. Don't let the world talk you into resurrecting him. Don't let your flesh talk you into resurrecting him. And don't let Satan try to talk you into resurrecting him. The old man is dead and buried, brothers and Christ. The power of the gospel is a new life, which is in Christ Jesus our Lord. Having a form of godliness, but denying the power thereof. From such, turn away. Why do we have to turn away? Let's say it's a brother in Christ that's starting to fail a lot of these stuff. Why do we have to turn away from them? Because they're going to draw you in. Why do we turn away from the world and say, I'm sorry, I can't have anything to do with you when it comes to these things. I can't have anything to do with that. Because they're trying to draw you in. One of the enemies is the world. The flesh. Satan. Okay. When you have a brother in Christ, why is there, we did a study way back when, is, there, is sin justification to break fellowship? And it is. 
Why? Because you don't want to get dragged in and start making the same mistakes that brother or sister in Christ is doing that they refuse to give up that mistake, that sin, that lust, the covetousness, lovers of their own selves, being proud, blasphemers, blaspheming the Word of God to try to justify what they're doing. Go ahead. Uh, disobedient to parents, unthankful, unholy. I don't want to be that way. That's the old man. You brought, and you, we pointed out, some have corrected me. I've corrected brothers and sisters Christ out there. You're starting to resurrect the old man. You're starting to look like the world, act like the world. You're starting to do things the world's way. And we try to warn you. And if all comes, when a push comes to shove, you choose the way of the world, you choose the flesh, you choose Satan, there's nothing we can do. I can't go that direction. Is sin justification to break fellowship? Yes, it is. From such, withdraw thyself. We are in this world, but we are not of this world. And with some brethren, it's hard to tell the difference. You're in the world, but you're not of the world. But how can we tell the difference between being of the world and not of the world? It's hard with some brethren because they're struggling with the flesh and they're struggling with that old man. Either you're newly saved and you're struggling with the old man hardcore or you've, you've been saved for a while, God's cleaned up your life and you've dropped your guard. Who's the lowercase g God of this world? Satan. God says be sober, be vigilant for your adversary the devil going around like a roaring lion seeking whom he may devour. I've seen brethren that God has cleaned up their life. They're living for the Lord. They love the Lord with all their heart. They love his word. They're hiding his word in their heart. And what happens? They let their guard down. The world comes in and starts messing them up. The flesh comes in and starts messing them up. Satan comes in and tries to get you to resurrect the old man. And there's brethren that are failing. There's times in my life that I failed the Lord. And the Lord had to remind me, that old man needs to stay dead and buried. That's the world that we're living in, and we're getting so vexed by it, and you should be vexed by it. We don't want anything to do with it. From such, turn away. For of this sort are they which creep into houses and lead captive silly women laden with sins, led away with diverse lusts. Now, it doesn't say this specifically, but the number one woman that gets... that this... That, will fall for this as a woman that doesn't have a head covering. And we'll be talking this in a whole other study, but I got attacked because I'm wearing a hat when I read the Word of God and preach the Word of God. Well, you're not supposed to wear a head covering. Feminist women, professing Christian women and lost women, professing lost women, are doing everything they can to get away from having a man as a head covering. And this will be a whole other study. But why is that so easy? Because they don't have a head covering. They're not obeying God's word and hiding God's word in their heart. Be careful about that. Verse 7, ever learning and never able to come to the knowledge of the truth. Ever learning. Now, we study the Bible. The Bible, 2 Timothy 2.15 says, Study to show thyself approved unto God, a workman that needeth not to be shamed, rightly dividing the word of truth. But the lost world, they don't like this as the final authority. They don't like the commandments of God. They don't like God's way. So what do they do? They try to, with their own man's wisdom, man's puffed up wisdom, try to find their own way. And then they try to justify it through wisdom, through learning. Oh, we can learn this, we can learn it. That's why ever learning, ever learning, ever learning. And the knowledge of the truth is right here, brothers and Christ. It's right at their fingertips. Anybody can get a King James Bible and read it and learn how to get saved. The true plan of salvation, repentance towards God, faith in our Lord Jesus Christ, confess both in prayer, and ask God to save you. Anybody can read, get this book and read it and get saved. And then this book will start telling you how things are. Doctrine. This book will start te tell, teaching you how you're supposed to live. The do's and the don'ts. Instruction and righteousness. All scripture is given by inspiration of God. And it's profitable for doctrine, for reproof, for correction, for instruction and righteousness. It's right here. But they look everywhere else. And they're always ever learning and never able to come to the knowledge of the truth. This is the world we live in today. Now as Janus and James Danbury's withstood Moses, so do these also resist the truth. What's going on there? Uh, Moses and the two priests of Pharaoh, when Moses would do a um, miracle, the priests would copy said miracle. They withstood Moses. 
But there was a point, as we're going to keep reading, there's a point where they can't put on the show anymore. They can't copy. You can have fake false converts that will start having a few good fruits This kind of lined up with the scriptures. They have some good fruits, but when you actually analyze their life completely, you'll realize those fruits are reprobate fruits. Okay? They're worthless. Why? Because they're not saved. There's people who can put on a show and put on an act, but when you back them into a corner with the Word of God, their words change. Who they really are starts coming out. Okay, I've had that with a lot of people. Well, I'm saved. Start talking to them about the Word of God and really hammer, hammer them with the Word of God with love and with respect, but you hammer them hard with the Word of God. What's their attitude? How the, are they hiding this in their heart and living it? Oh, no, I'm not living it. But they had some fruits that kind of caught your eye and make them think, oh, they're, they're saved. Just like these two guys could copy the miracles that Moses did up to a point. Then it got to a point where their true colors came out. They're worthless. They're reprobate. Their gods can't save them. Was it men of corrupt minds? Reprobate concerning the faith. Reprobate concerning the faith. Worthless. They're worthless men. But they shall pr proceed no further, for their folly shall be manifest unto all men as theirs also was. That's what I mean by false converts. They might say the right things, but are they living it? That was a warning I gave the brethren because I made a huge mistake in my life. I let someone into my life that said the right things, but I didn't make sure that she was living those things. Okay. Her true colors came out. Brothers and sisters of Christ, but they shall proceed no further, for their folly shall be manifest unto all men, as theirs also was. But thou hast fully known my doctrine, manner of life, purpose, faith, long-suffering, charity. Remember, charity is self-sacrifice. How many times you come across men in these Babel buildings that are preaching charity, 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 but they don't have self-sacrifice. I've caught some men online doing it too. Charity, 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 but they don't have self-sacrifice. They want you to have self-sacrifice, but they don't have self-sacrifice. And remember, charity isn't looking the other way. Today, people are trying to pervert charity. Charity, it's, it's self-sacrifice, but it also means you've got to look the other way. When you see a brother or sister in Christ heading for destruction, oh, you're supposed to have charity and just look the other way. Uh, no, that's not true charity. True charity is self-sacrifice. I don't care if it costs me that fellowship. I'm going to preach truth to that brother or sister in Christ to try to help build them back up and get them back on the right path. I don't care what it costs me. Okay? True charity is self-sacrifice. Putting yourself last. Patience. Persecutions. Afflictions. which come unto me at Antioch, at Iconium, at Lystra. What persecutions I endured, but out of, all of, the, of, out of them all the Lord delivered me. You know how you see through somebody, brother, says Christ? A false convert? This right here? What does Satan want to do? He wants to take that from you. So you don't see. You can't see. Without this, you can't tell a false convert from true, someone who's truly saved. You can't. You, without this, you can't tell the Antichrist from the real Jesus Christ. We have this, and so we can look out there and say that, that 3.5 billion people who profess an A, Jesus Christ that they believe in a Jesus Christ, we can look and say 90, sometimes it feels like 99%, but I'll be nice and say 90% of them, that Jesus you profess, it's the Antichrist. It's what the Bible says is the Antichrist. Because your Jesus doesn't line up with the Jesus of the Bible. This is how you do it, brother and sister Christ. Paul says, you know I'm real. I'm not like the world. I'm not one of these fakes and frauds that are ever learning and never able to come to the knowledge of truth. Why? Here's the fruit, the good fruit, doctrine. But thou hast really known my doctrine, manner of life, instruction in righteousness, purpose, uh, rebuke, correction, to be perfect in God's eyes, the ministry of reconciliation, okay? preaching the gospel, trying, desperately wanting people to get saved. Desperately wanting brethren to keep their eyes on Jesus Christ, which is what we're going to get to. Keep your eyes on Jesus Christ every day with the day life you live. Okay. The faith. 
Okay, long-suffering. Teach you, we got to be long-suffering. God is. We're supposed to be long-suffering. I will never, I, I, I'll strive to be, but I'll never be as long-suffering as God is. Praise the Lord that He is. He's tearing. Why haven't we gone home yet? He's tearing. We look at the world today and it's so hard to preach G the real Jesus Christ among all these antichrists. Jesus himself warned us about all these antichrists. It's so hard today to preach the true plan of salvation. Try to reach people for Jesus Christ. They already have this idea of who they want Jesus Christ to be because they've been taught that they can come up with their own Jesus Christ that conforms to them. They don't have to conform to the real Jesus Christ. Yea, and all that will live godly in Christ Jesus shall suffer persecution. Now, one of the things that we weren't, I wasn't prepared for, but I'm trying to warn you, brothers Christ, that persecution is not limited to lost people persecuting saved, Bible-believing, God-fearing men and women. Sometimes you're going to have brethren that fall away that they're going to start persecuting you too because they start giving into the world. They start giving into the flesh. They start giving into Satan. Okay. You could suffer persecution from saved people that don't want to get rid of their sins, who don't want to give up worldly day, worldly things, culture, traditions of men. Okay. But predominantly, yea, and all that will live godly, that's what it talks about, all that will live godly in Christ Jesus shall suffer persecution. But what's that motivation, really that good motivation to live godly? The blessed hope which we're going to get to when we get to chapter 14. But evil men, see, we live godly, we're going to suffer persecution. Why do brethren tend to fall away? The persecution. They get persecuted by the world. They get persecuted by their flesh. They get persecuted by, the, by Satan. And they start giving in to those persecutions, and they start falling to, into the world. Mm -hmm. Brothers and Christ, we need to stand. We need to do all to stand. We need to keep our eyes on Jesus Christ. But evil men and seducers shall wax worse and worse, deceiving and being deceived. Like I said, the number one person that's most hardest to reach for Jesus Christ today is someone who's religious. Someone who has a belief of some God, especially professing Christians out there, have a belief in a Jesus Christ, but they're hard to re reach. Because evil men and seducers have waxed worse and worse, deceiving them, and deceiving themselves. It's hard to reach those people. Right? I was one of those people, Brother Says Christ. Sometimes i got to keep reminding myself and reminding you, I was one of those people, a false convert, Babel building goer. I was deceived. All you have to do is believe in the death, burial, and resurrection of Jesus Christ, and that He paid for the sins, present tense, of the whole world. Well, if that's true, then everybody's saved. He didn't, present tense, pay for the sins of the whole world. He paid the price at Calvary on the cross. You want your sins forgiven? You go to the cross. But I wasn't taught that. I was taught, eh, you just believe in the death, burial, and resurrection. There is no repentance. And, you know, you just live however you want to live. Enjoy life. Be one of these. The, I fell under this whole list over here, chapter 13, the, from chapter uh, verses 1 through 5. That was me. I was a false convert until Jesus showed me the truth. Until I started conforming after salvation, I got saved. I conformed to the, the real Jesus Christ. He said, this is how you get saved. I obeyed. Right? Now, after I got saved, I struggled with the flesh, fighting the flesh and fighting the world and fighting Satan. Right? God had a hard time with me smacking me around to get me on the right path, get me to do what's right. Doesn't happen overnight. But that comes after salvation, and it's guaranteed to someone who's truly saved. Because you love the real Jesus Christ, and you're going to conform to Him. Remember what Jesus said, If a man love me, he'll keep my words. You are my friends if you do whatsoever I command you. When you truly love Jesus Christ, you're going to do things His way. No matter what it costs you. No matter what. Video games, I don't care, they're gone. Holidays, I don't care, they're gone. Drugs, alcohol fornication, foul mouth, whatever it is, I don't care what it costs me, I love my Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, and I'm going to follow Him. I'm going to follow Him. What happens when brethren stop having that attitude? They're starting to give in to the world. They're starting to give in to the flesh. 
They're starting to give in to Satan. They're starting to resurrect the old man. Okay. But you have evil men and seducers shall wax worse and worse, deceiving and being deceived. They're the hardest people to deal with. I was hard to deal with. I was enjoying the world. There came a point in my life where my life didn't mean squat anymore. Nothing meant anything. I was broken. Now you can work with them. And that's what we're waiting for, brothers and sisters Christ. We're looking for that open door of brokenness and the people around us. But those doors aren't opening hardly. So I understand, but we still need to be ready to give an answer, as the Bible talks about. We need to be ready to preach the gospel when the door opens. 14. But continue thou in the things which thou hast learned and hast been assured of. Hello? That's the sign of a Bible-believing, God-fearing man, brother says Christ, right here. If it's not in here, then it's not worth it. But continue thou th but continue thou in the things which thou hast learned and hast been assured of, knowing of whom thou hast learned them, and that from a child thou hast known the Holy Scriptures. From a child thou hast known the Holy Scriptures? Remember what the Bible says. The laws of God are written on every man's heart. And the law is our schoolmaster to bring us to Christ. True liberty is being freed from the law of sin and death. The curse of the law. Before Jesus Christ died on the cross, you had to go through the old uh, Levitical laws. The Levitical laws pointed you to the law of sin and death. The ultimate law, sin and death. If you don't keep the Levitical laws, God's laws, then you break the law of sin and death and you go to hell. And why is it called a curse? Because we can't keep the law. But from a child that has known the Holy Scriptures, which are able to make thee wise unto salvation. I had to come to a point where uh, it's not just head belief. I'm a dirty, rotten, filthy, low-down, no-good sinner on my way to hell, and I deserve to go to hell for sinning against God. I'm not truly saved. Look at me. I look like the world. I act like the world. I laugh at the world's jokes. I don't read the Bible. I don't take God's word seriously. I'm not hiding God's word in my heart. I'm just a, a, a pretend Christian, a fake Christian. The Bible calls it false convert. I'm just playing Christian and just enjoying my life here on earth. The flesh, the world, Satan. I had to come to a brokenness where I need to get saved. I'm wretched. O oh, wretched man that I am, who shall deliver me from this body of death? Salvation does. God will give you a new life. Paul talked about being the chiefest of sinners. And we got to be careful. Some people try to use that present tense. Paul, present tense, is a saved sinner. After everything he's been through for the Lord, he's still the chiefest of sinners. Uh, that's not what he's talking about. He's talking about when I got saved, because you read that whole chapter, he's talking about salvation and preaching salvation. If God could save a wretched man like me, I was the ch I'm the chiefest of sinners. He's talking about at salvation. I'm the chiefest of sinners. If God can save someone like me and turn my life around after salvation, He can save you. He can save anybody. Brothers and Christ, if God could save a wretched, wicked man like me, He can save anybody. And if you're lost in watching this, He can save you. you got to come to Him broken. you got to stop trying to establish your own righteousness. you got to drop your pride and your ego. Your attitude towards sin has to be has to change. You go from loving sin to hating sin, and what the Bible says is sin. Then you come to the cross, and you believe in the finished work of Jesus Christ on the cross. I always keep saying that finished work, finished work. That it's God, that Jesus is God, manifest in the flesh. It's God's blood that's shed on the cross, and His blood can wash your sins away, and have after salvation, have washed your sins away. They can and will wash your sins away. You come to Him. But if you don't come to Him as a broken sinner, as a dirt and rotten, filthy sinner, the Bible says, for godly sorrow worketh repentance to salvation. If you don't come to Him with true sorrow in your heart for your sinful wickedness, the state that you're in, you'll never be able to believe in the finished work of Jesus Christ on the cross. And that from a child thou hast known the holy scriptures which are able to make thee wise unto salvation through faith which is in Christ Jesus our Lord. Our capital L, Lord. The Lord. Who is come in the flesh. Who's the great I am. 
Holy, holy, holy is the Lord God Almighty who was and is and is to come. Jesus is God fully and completely. There is only one capital G, the God the Father. And the person, singular, of Jesus Christ. That's the Godhead. Now we look at here, what, sing, what separates us from the lost world? How do we have a changed life after salvation? Paul tells it right here. It says that you have the Holy Scriptures in your heart. The laws of God are written on every man's heart. And verse 16. All right. And some people say also when it's talking there, and that from a child thou hast known the Holy Scriptures. When you get saved, you're born again. You're a child of God. When you're born again, you've got the Holy Spirit in you that's going to open the Scriptures. And that's where we get to verse 16. All Scriptures given by inspiration of God is profitable for doctrine, for reproof, for correction, for instruction in righteousness, that the man of God may be perfect, thoroughly furnished unto all good works. What sets me apart from the lost world as a saved sinner? We already did a, a, a Bible study on the perfect heart. You're hiding God's Word in your heart, and you're living it every day and why you why are we so adamant about living it today not tomorrow today it needs to be lived today 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 well, let's keep reading chapter four okay the whole reason i really want to talk to you i want to explain the state of the world how we used to be how we are today we're living for jesus christ every day by hiding his word in our heart and jesus is a light that's in us and it's a light to the world we live today for Jesus Christ, not tomorrow. And we don't worry about yesterday. You might have failed the Lord yesterday. Don't worry about it. Today is a new day. Get back to serving the Lord. Get back to living for Jesus Christ every day. Why do we, how do you have this passion? And why do I have this passion? Why should you, if you don't, should you, brothers and sisters of Christ, have this passion? Chapter 4, verse 1. I charge thee, therefore, after going through all this, the world's this wickedness, you're supposed to be different, you're going to suffer persecution, you're going to be living for the Lord, you're going to be set apart from the world, you're going to be going through some hard times, but it's to lead people to Christ. Why am I still here and not in heaven right now? Got a plane going over. It's pretty low. We have a little airport nearby. But Jesus Christ, why am I still here? Why are you still here? Because there's two ways you witness to the lost world. With your words, preaching the gospel, and the life that you live for Jesus Christ. We're set apart from the world. We're different from the world. The Bible says those who, that which is highly esteemed among men is an abomination in the sight of God. We don't conform to this world. We're not a friend to this world. We don't love the world. We love the Word. We love our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, by keeping His Word. We're set apart. He talks about that and says, I charge thee, therefore, before God and the Lord Jesus Christ, who shall judge the quick and the dead at His appearing and at His kingdom. There's two judgments. One of the biggest lies, brother, sister Christ, that I was told as a false convert is the moment you get saved, I'm free from all judgment. I can live however I want. I can do whatever I want. There's no consequences. God loves you. God's all about love and forgiveness. He'll forgive you. He'll love you. You can just do whatever you want. The fear of God wasn't instilled in me. I had no fear of God as a professing Christian when I lined up with chapter 3, verses 1 through 5. No fear of the Lord. The Bible says, work out your own salvation with fear and trembling. What's it talking about? The judgment seat of Christ. What do we read here? The quick and the dead at his appearing, the catching away of the body of Christ. That's how we know the judgment seat is going to happen at the catching away of the body of Christ. We get caught up, the judgment happens for us. We're saved. Brothers and Christ, the point I'm making is, is everyone is still going to be judged someday. Everyone. You don't escape judgment just because you're saved. Well, I'm saved now. I can do whatever I want. No. From this point on, brothers and sisters of Christ, I can hear some of my chickens in the background. From this point on, your life gets judged at the judgment seat of Christ. Don't forget that. And don't let people like these prosperity gospel people and Babel buildings, online, whatever, try to, try to deceive you into thinking that it's not a big deal. 
It is a big deal. We're supposed to have our eyes on things that are eternal, the judgment seat of Christ, what lasts, what passes through the fire, the gold, the silver, okay? And we're supposed to be worried about the wood, hay, and stubble, that we don't have no, tons of wood, hay, and stubble. We're supposed to keep our eyes on things above, things that are eternal, not things that are temporal. There's brethren out there that are working hardcore on things that are temporal, and it's not worth it. Yes, we got to live. Yes, we got to have food. I got food. Praise the Lord. He's blood, provided me with food. He's provided me with clothes. He's got a roof over my head. Praise the Lord. I'm living for the Lord. But some people aren't content with food and raiment. There's going to come a judgment for the saved and for the lost. The Bible says that every, every knee shall bow, every tongue shall confess, so that every one of us shall give an account of himself to God. Everyone's going to give an account of themselves to God. There's going to be a judgment. Don't be deceived. Are you living? I'm not trying to be mean. I'm not trying to be fearful. But it's a fearful thing if you've been laying around and not doing much for the Lord. You should be fearful. For the brother and sister Christ out there, it's been lazy and just been sitting around and, and falling back into the world, the flesh, and doing things Satan's way. Pride is number one. The Satan's way is pride. So you're not getting busy for the Lord and living for the Lord hardcore every day. Verse 2, it says, Preach the word. Be instant in season, out of season. Reprove, rebuke, exhort with all long suffering and doctrine. And that's what I'm doing here. That's what men that get called to preach, that's what we're supposed to do. We're supposed to be preaching the word, not the world. Okay, we're not supposed to be preaching worldly things and, and the world and the world. We're supposed to be preaching the word. We're not supposed to get you to hide the world in your heart and the traditions of men and rudiments of the world and whatnot and the flesh, things of the flesh, perverting liberty, saying, oh, we got liberty, we got liberty, when that's not what liberty is. Liberty is not there to justify sin. Liberty is there to give you an assurance of salvation, that you are sealed into the day of redemption. That's what that liberty is there for. And you have brethren taking that and perverting it and saying, now we can sin all we want or we can hide sin underneath it. We can't sin all we want, but I can take certain things that the Bible calls sin, you know, idolatry, covetousness, which is idolatry, and I can hide it under liberty. You're going to be judged one day. We're supposed to be preaching the Word. And we're supposed to be instant in season, out of season. It doesn't matter how bad this world's getting, brothers and sisters Christ. We need to be st studying the Word, hiding God's Word in our heart. And men in ministry, we need to keep preaching the Word. And we need to put it on as heavy as we can as we've never put it on before in these last days. But when you got men that, f start, that turn their back on the imminent return of Jesus Christ, believing that Jesus Christ can come back any day, they don't put it on as hard as, as they should. They're not preaching the Word as hard as they should. They get distracted by the world. They start getting comfortable down here. Preach the word. Be instant in season, out of season. Reprove, rebuke, exhort with all long suffering and doctrine. For the time will come where they will not endure sound doctrine. Sometimes it feels like we're there, brother and sister Christ, in the last days. It's, we're trying to preach truth to all these false converts, but they got to come broken. They don't want sound doctrine. They don't believe in the true plan. First, they don't believe this is God's perfect written word in English, the King James Bible. They don't believe in any perfect written word. So they have no foundation. We have a foundation. And we try to show them, look what God has done for me because He's given me a foundation. He's given me a new life. We preach the true plan of salvation from this, from the Bible, King James Bible. They don't want it. Eternal security. True belief that in the catching way of the body of Christ as we're going to get to here, is looking for that blessed hope and loving the appearing of Jesus Christ. We want it to happen today, and we're going to live today as if it's going to happen, if it could happen today, because we love it. We're not putting it off like the lost world does. Well, we'll put it off. We'll put it off. We'll put it off. It's not going to happen for another five, ten years. We're going to put it off and put it off and put it off. That's what the lost world does. That's not what we do. If you truly head belief is and the words is saying, I believe in the pre-time of Jacob's trouble catching away the body of Christ. But for it to be down here, you're looking for that blessed hope every day. You're loving the appearing of Jesus Christ every day with the life that you're living for Jesus Christ. That's how you can tell somebody who truly believes in the pre-time of Jacob's trouble catching away the body of Christ. That's how you can tell when brethren fall away. At one point they had that attitude and they lived like that, but then they turned their back on it. 
Okay. For the time will come when they will not endorse sound doctrine, dispensational teaching. The Godhead, which is God the Father in the person of Jesus Christ. One person in the Godhead is what the Bible teaches. And we put out some videos here in a little bit talking about the Godhead with the brothers and sisters in Christ. Okay. For the time will come when they will not endure sound doctrine, but after their own lusts, so they heap to themselves teachers having itching ears. You know why a lot of people like the Babel buildings? Because they're because because their their soul isn't getting fed; their flesh is. Okay. They shall turn away their ears from the truth and shall turn into fables. That's what we're seeing going on in the world, brothers and Christ. The number, th the three things that will keep you is the world, your flesh, and Satan. Those are the three enemies. That's why the Bible says, you know, be sober, be vigilant. Okay, the Bible talks about putting on the whole armor of God. They shall turn away their ears from the truth and shall be turned into fables. Like the Trinity. God and three persons. Three lowercase g gods that make up one capital G God. Okay. Oh, I don't believe in dispensational teaching. That if the, the salvation's been the same th throughout the whole Bible. Fables. Fable, 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 fable. Oh, Jesus really wasn't God. You know, all these false religions claiming to be Christians like Mormons and, and um, Jehovah's Witness. And what is, uh, my brain freezes sometimes but when it comes to names. But maybe the Lord will bring it to me. But there's uh, um, Muslims. You know, they believe that Jesus was raptured up with his mother and he never died. You know, and he's not God. You know, these are all these fables, 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 fables. You want the truth? It's right here. Even Mormons who hold this don't want this. Pearl of Great Price, uh, the Mormon book, all these things go against this and they're supposed to ignore this and go for the world and go for fables. They turn themselves into fables. But what are we supposed to do, brothers and sisters Christ? When we see the world falling apart, we see the world getting wicked, we're trying to, we, we still trying to preach the gospel, we're still trying to stand for God's word and the life that we're living, and trying to be a light. Remember, the two ways to witness for Jesus Christ is the life you live for Him, hiding His word in your heart, and being Jesus shining through you, and verbally witnessing, giving your testimony, preaching the gospel. Some people forget that it's both. You need both in your life, brothers and Christ, not just words. You need that changed life. You need that life of Christ to be a light to the world. But watch thou in all things. Watch thou in all things. Adore, endure affliction. Do the work of an evangelist. Make full proof of thy ministry. Remember, this is written to Timothy, a young man in ministry. Make full proof of thy ministry. Nothing should be hidden. I remember these Babel buildings. Sorry if you could get catching some of the noise in the neighborhood. I remember these Babel buildings. I donated, and they would always have these excuses. We're not going to show you our books unless you donate. Well, I'm a donator. Can I see the books? Well, you don't really need to see the books, and you don't have the right... They wouldn't make full proof of thy ministry when it comes to finances, when it comes to physically, when it comes to spiritually. Your life should be an open book, brother, sister, Christ. If a preacher's in ministry, your life is an open book to the brethren. There should be no secrets as far as hiding things. You're not going to know everything. I don't know everything about every preacher. You're not going to know everything. But I'm just saying, when something comes up, oh, you don't need to know that, and, and, and this is private, and and who are you to judge me according to this book? This is the number one way you, you show proof of your ministry. Does my ministry line up with the book? Full proof of thy ministry. Does your ministry line up with the book, brother, in Christ? If young man, any man decides, I want to get into the ministry, your ministry needs to line up with the book, the major doctrines, instruction and righteousness, looking for Jesus Christ, encouraging the brethren to live for Jesus Christ every day because he could come back today. Verse 6, For I am ready to be offered, and the time of my departure is at hand. Paul knew that he's in prison, the time's coming close, he's going to end up dying for Jesus Christ. He still looked for that blessed hope. People say, no, he didn't. He knew he's going to... You keep going to the Old Testament, but the New Testament, Paul comes up and says, looking in this present world, the world Paul was living in, 
looking for that blessed hope that we might, that He might redeem us. Might. There's no guarantee that Jesus is coming back in my lifetime, but I'm going to live, I'm supposed to live every day as if He might redeem me. He might redeem us, brothers and sisters in Christ. I'm ready now to be offered. Are you ready to be offered? To be called home, whether in death or the catching away of the body of Christ. Paul was getting ready to get called home in death. I have fought a good fight. I have finished my course. I have kept the faith. You know what's motivated? The way the world is and how we're supposed to be? What motivates Paul? The catching away of the body of Christ and the judgment seat of Christ. When does it happen? At his appearing. He'll judge the quick and the dead at his appearing. There's judgment at the judgment seat of Christ. That's why it's called the judgment seat of Christ. I fought the good fight. I have finished my course. I have kept the faith. This is the point I want to point with you, brother and Christ. Henceforth there is laid up for me a crown of righteousness, which the Lord, the righteous judge, shall give me on that day, and not me only, but unto all them that love his appearing. Well, wait, he just said it's a crown of righteousness, living right, doing right, taking God's word, hiding it in your heart, and living it, a crown of righteousness. And then he says, but not to me only, but on to all them that love his appearing. You mean loving his appearing is related to Jesus saying, if a man love me, he'll keep my words. Loving the appearing of Jesus Christ means you're living for Jesus Christ every day. He could come back today, and I love that appearing. I want him to come back today. You know there's been times in my life where I did, as a saved sinner, I didn't want Jesus to come back. I didn't love his appearing. And you want to know when those times are, brother, sister Christ? I was wrong. The Bible says we're to love his appearing. But the reasons I didn't is because my life didn't line up with this book. My heart was not right with the Lord. I had let the world in. I had let the flesh in. I had started caving into Satan's attacks. I wasn't putting on the whole armor of God. And when my life was just a mess, I was like, Lord, if you come back right now, look what you're going to find. And God had to get me and teach me that I'm supposed to have the attitude. I'm supposed to be looking for that blessed hope every day. I'm supposed to be loving His appearing every day, brothers and sisters in Christ. And through this whole thing that we read, I really want to encourage you, brothers and sisters Christ, don't lose hope in loving the appearing of Jesus Christ. Don't get distracted by what's going on in this world, brothers and sisters of Christ. Don't. Continue living for Jesus Christ every day. Fight the good fight, as Paul talked about. Have you finished your course? Have you fought the good fight? Are you still fighting the good fight, brothers and sisters in Christ? Especially brethren in ministry. Are you fighting the good fight? Or are you rolling over? You're caving into the world, to the flesh, to Satan. Now we keep bringing up these three enemies because we, can, we need to remember, and it's a big reminder for me, brothers and sisters in Christ, our enemy is not the lost people in the world. Our enemy is the world as a whole, the ways of the world. The ways of the world. Yes, lost people are the enemy in the sense of God. Uh, Satan can use them to attack us and persecute us. Absolutely. But the world as a whole is the enemy. The ways of the world. Okay? Your flesh is the enemy. Satan is the enemy. Brother says Christ, we're supposed to be loving. Remember, loving is an action. Looking is an action. I have to keep bringing this up. It doesn't say we're supposed to believe in the catching away of the, the pre-time of Jacob's trouble, catching away of the body of Christ. We're not supposed to believe in it, head belief. We're supposed to love it. We're supposed to be looking for it. Present tense. Are you looking for it? Do you love it? There's brethren that have turned their back on it. They're not looking for it. They don't love it. Action. They can say I love it with their words. Does their life prove it? Are they living for Jesus Christ every day? Do they have that heartfelt, I got to live for Jesus today. We might not be here tomorrow. I need to get as much as I can get done for Jesus Christ today. I'm going to get caught up and the judgment seat of Christ is going to happen. Work out your own salvation with fear and trembling. Proverbs 3, 5 through 7 real quick. To encourage you, brothers of Christ. Trust in the Lord with all thine heart and lean not unto thine own understanding. Trust the Lord, brothers of Christ. We're still here for a reason. 
Trust the Lord. He knows what He's doing. No matter what's going on in the world, He knows what He's doing. Trust the Lord. When He says we're supposed to look for His appearing, and we're supposed to love His appearing, the catching away of the body of Christ, and live every day for it, trust the Lord. There's times that I get impatient. And the Bible says we need to be patient. Not impatient, patient. When the time comes, we'll be with our Lord and Savior forever. But until that time comes, we need to be serving our Lord to, and the brethren here on this earth. Right here, right now, every day. Trust in the Lord with all thine heart. Are you taking this? Put it in your heart. Trust the Lord with all thy heart. And lean not unto thy own understanding. That's when I fail the Lord. When I try to go off in man's wisdom and man's understanding. Lean not unto thy own understanding. In all thy ways acknowledge him. And he shall direct thy paths. Are you looking for Jesus Christ every day? Are you acknowledging Jesus Christ every day in the life that you're living? Giving God glory for everything? Giving Him thanks for everything? Brothers and sisters of Christ, this is serious in these last days. I'm tired. Brothers and sisters Christ, I am so tired of the lost world. The fighting with the lost world. I am so tired of the fight with the false converts and wolves in sheep's clothing. I'm so tired of brethren falling away. I'm so tired of this guy right here failing the Lord from time to time. I'm sick and tired of fighting this flesh, fighting the world, fighting Satan. And then God has to keep reminding me that we're renewed day by day. Just trust in me. Trust in me. I will renew your spirit day by day. I can, you can do all things through Christ with strength in you. He'll renew your spirit. But there are days that at the end of the day, I'm, I'm tired of all this. I'm weary. And I know you two are brothers and sisters in Christ. But God will renew us and we got to keep going and trust in the Lord. In all his ways acknowledge him and he shall direct thy paths. Verse 7. Be not wise in thine own eyes. Fear the Lord and depart from evil. Fear the Lord, depart from evil. That almost goes hand in hand, brothers of Christ. If you truly fear the Lord, you're going to depart from evil. If you don't depart from evil then you're not fearing the Lord. And I'm telling you, in my life, there's times where I tried to hold on to sin. And I look back and go, Lord, where was, the, where was my fear? When I was trying to hold on to that sin, when I was trying to hold on to the world, when I was trying to hold on to the flesh, when I started doing things Satan's way, like pride number one is the pride one. Where is the fear of the Lord? Oh, Lord, please have mercy on my soul. Please have mercy on me, oh, Lord. Forgive me, oh, Lord. I'm sorry. The fear of the Lord is to depart from evil, brother says Christ. The fear of the Lord, depart from evil. Don't forget that. They go hand in hand. You see someone who's doing wickedness and evil, looking like the world, acting like the world, and they say, oh, I fear God. They're lying. They don't fear God. The fear of the Lord is to depart from evil. Okay. There's an old hymn just to encourage the brethren that no matter what you're going through here on this earth, whether you're struggling with the world, you're struggling with the flesh, you're struggling and fighting that war with Satan, putting on the whole armor of God, you're getting discouraged by what you see. Like I said, uh, brethren falling away, um, brethren causing division. I've been accused of it for standing for the word of God. What does the Bible say? You're going to suffer persecution. Those that will live godly will suffer persecution. doesn't mean it's only going to come from the lost world. You can get persecuted by brethren that don't want to let go of sin, don't want to let go of the world, don't want to let go of the uh, flesh. When I was newly saved, there were things I held on to. I would have fought you, brothers of Christ. I, when I was first saved, I was addicted to video games, Hollywood movies, um, TV shows, satanic style music, porn. And there were some things that are like, it's obviously wicked, I need to give this up. But there were some things I tried to hold on to. I tried to hold on to video games. If you'd have confronted me when I was newly saved, oh, those video games have got to go, I would have fought you. And you would have gotten persecution from a brother in Christ. You're living godly, and you're trying to get me to live godly. And you're doing it with love. You're not in the wrong. I would have been in the wrong. That's why I try to tell people you need to have grace for people who are newly saved. God's working on them. Let them know that's wickedness, but then you move on. God will deal with them. Okay? Have some grace for people who are newly saved and struggling with the flesh. But, brothers and sisters of Christ, you might be going to heart. I just want to sing this song for you. It's an, it's an old hymn. It's called, When the Roll is Called Up Yonder. Okay? 
When the trumpets of the Lord shall sound, and time shall be no more, and the morning breaks eternal, bright and fair. When the saved of earth shall gather over on the other shore, and the roll is called up yonder, I'll be there. When the roll is called up yonder, 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 I'll be there. On that bright and cloudless morning when the dead in Christ shall rise and the glory of his resurrection share. When his chosen ones are gathered to their homes beyond the sky and the roll is called up yonder, I'll be there. When the roll is called up yonder, 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 I'll be there. Let us labor for the Master from the dawn till setting sun. Let us talk of all His wondrous love and care. Then when all life is over and our work on earth is done, and the roll is called up yonder, I'll be there. When the roll is called up yonder, 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 I'll be there. You know something I notice a lot, Brother Says Christ, I'm going through a lot of hymns. Sometimes it doesn't happen, but even if it's just a little remark, there's always a mention of us getting called home. Us going to be with our Lord and Savior, going to heaven. Brethren, Christians, for thousands, the last couple thousand years going back to Paul, was lo looking for that blessed hope and loving the glorious appearing of our great God and Savior, Jesus Christ, with the life that they're living. They're looking for it. Some gospel, uh, uh, some old hymns might have some errors in it, but you look in there and they're talking about going up. Brother says Christ, when the, when the roll is called up yonder, I pray that you're there. You know, I pray all of you are truly saved. You're not just plain Christian. You're not those fake Christians like I was that lo was lovers of pleasures more than lovers of God. You're not, you know, you're not going to be a brother in Christ that's fallen away that when the roll is called up yonder, it's going to take you by such a surprise that you're going to be like, like I was in my past. I'm not ready, Lord, you're calling me home. I'm not, look, I'm not ready. I got pride in my life. I got worldliness in my life. I've been given into the flesh over here. I haven't really been fighting Satan that much. And, 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 you know, we wrestle not against flesh and blood, but against principalities, against powers, against the rulers of this darkness of this world, against spiritual wickedness in high places. I haven't been doing that. I'm not ready, Lord. And they're going to be caught by surprise. I still, uh, one of my favorite uh, hymns when it comes to going up is, There is Coming a Day. What a day that'll be. There is coming a day when no heartache shall come. No more clouds in the sky. No more tears to dim the eye. All is peace forevermore on that happy golden shore. What a day, glorious day that will be. Brothers says Christ, looking for that day isn't just sitting here. There's nothing wrong with sitting here, talking with the Lord, listening to the Old Testament be read. I'm talking about me. I listen to the Old Testament be read by Alexander Scorvey. I sit out here, I look at the clouds, I look at the sky, I look at nature, and I talk with the Lord. But true loving the appearing of Jesus Christ and looking for Jesus Christ, brother says Christ, is living for Him every day. You have a passion, you have this fire in your heart for the Lord and for His Word. We need to get back to that, brother, sister, Christ, no matter what's going on in the world. Brethren falling away, the world's falling apart, uh, wars, whatever. No matter what's going on in the world, we need to continue having that passion for Jesus Christ, preaching the gospel and being a living testimony for Jesus Christ. So, I'm sorry this took a little bit, brother, sister, Christ. I'm sorry, I just, I'm trying to get back on track and trying to live for the Lord every day. And I'm praying, brother, sister, Christ, that you do too. So grace and peace from God our Father and our Lord Jesus Christ be with you all and my love for you which is in Christ Jesus our Lord. When the roll gets called up yonder, brother says Christ, I'll be there. See you in the next study.